I'm going to start with a tragic story and then end with a hopeful story. In 1844, a medical doctor in Vienna, Austria, worked in the maternity hospital where nearly one-third of all patients died of infection following childbirth. Dr. Simmelweig decided to have all of the doctors wash their hands in a solution of chlorine bleach. At that time, the death rate dropped to just 2% until his supervisor decided that washing of hands was no longer necessary and ended the practice. Simmelweig spent the next 20 years trying to convince the education, the, the medical community to wash their hands with very little success. He was disrespected by his peers until finally he was lured to a mental hospital under false pretenses and put in a straitjacket and he shortly died thereafter, ironically, of infections. We have a similar disregard for those today who are promoting a proven antidote to ineffective educational practices. As we know, in the United States, 20% of high school students drop out before graduating. And of those who do graduate, two-thirds of them are not proficient in literacy or math. Eighty years ago, the pioneer of educational psychology, Jean Piaget, argued that any student could be highly proficient in literacy and math and other subjects if they received immediate feedback while doing the work. Thirty years ago, another educational psychologist, Benjamin Bloom, showed that all of his students scored twice as well as other students when they received personalized education through immediate feedback tools. What we're talking about here is computer-assisted instructional software that can easily accomplish that task today. I'm not talking about YouTube videos or, or uh, virtual classrooms or one-to-one -one devices. What I'm talking about is high-quality computer-assisted instructional software that personalizes the learning for every student. It uh, gives in immediate feedback and it is adaptive to the student's learning styles, respecting the pace of learning for each stu student as well, and giving immediate results for every response the student gives. Rather than a, a student turning in his paper and getting results the next day, the student knows precisely where they are in the moment. I'd like to give you an example, an illustration of that in practice. I'd like to take you to a classroom, a computer lab, where 75 junior high students are all studying math. Now, I would not have planned for putting three different math classes in one big lab of 75 computers, especially knowing what junior high kids are like. So I came into that classroom 10 minutes after it had started and I was surprised to find it deafeningly silent. Every student was fully attentive to what was on his computer screen. Every one of them was getting immediate feedback as they were working their math problems. They didn't even look up when I came in the classroom. There were three teachers roaming the classroom offering assistance as needed. The principal interrupted the class and invited me to speak. I said, how many of you feel you are getting math better today than you ever have in your life? Every hand went up. And then I said, how many of you used to think that you would never be good at math? Two thirds of the hands went up. I said, keep your hand up if you still feel you will never be good at math. Every hand came down. And then the students asked me a question. They said, 
are we going to be able to use this math software during summer vacation at home? Now, what students would want to do homework at home during the summer? Well, the brain researchers tell us why they were interested in using that software at home. And it's expressed in one word, dopamine. Dopamine is something that is released in the brain that gives joy to learning, and joy in a lot of other ways too, uh, when we get immediate feedback while working uh, problems in, in any subject. Getting that immediate feedback releases the dopamine in the brain. And it's the reason that computer games are so addictive. Well, it wasn't just the students who loved it. The teachers did as well. What they found is that students could get the skill building and content knowledge through a personalized virtual tutor, giving the teachers more time to engage the students in higher levels of discussion, such as synthesis, evaluation, collaboration, creativity. Well, the third-party evaluators also showed what this would do, because we always have third-party evaluations in this. They showed that these students were scoring off the charts. They were learning at two, three, and four times the rate of those students who didn't have the software. What's more, in Utah, we now have 250,000 students, a quarter of a million students who are receiving personalized learning episodes every day in subjects such as math, reading, uh, pre-kindergarten, and for immigrant students, they receive English language instruction on a daily basis. You may ask how it is we were able to deploy a quarter of a million licenses when Piaget and Bloom's theories have not been embraced by the education community. By the way, their other theories have been widely embraced and everybody knows their names, but they have had difficulty in getting people to accept the notion of personalized learning. Well, we did it through what I call the scarcity model. And we learned this when we implemented dual language immersion in Chinese in Utah. We only offered it to a few schools at once, and then they all wanted to get it because it was scarce. And now we have more children learning Mandarin Chinese in Utah than in any state in the nation. We're 1% of the nation's population, yet we have fully a third of all dual language immersion Chinese classes in America. Well, we did the same thing with these software programs. We said, who wants them? And the teachers who want to distinguish their school clamored for the opportunity. They offered a plan for how they would implement it and integrate it with their curriculum. And doing so, they now had ownership in the plan when they actually carried it out. We have had tremendous success in this. Our children are today are digital natives. They should not have to power down to come into the classroom. Each one of them is entitled to Bloom and Piaget's dream of a personalized education for every child, especially today when it can be provided so cheaply because of digital learning tools. I invite you to join me in setting the captive students free from the straitjacket of the 19th century classroom, enabling them to become the self-directed, autonomous learners they were born to be. Thank you very much. <laughs>